Hi everyone, John again. You might remember Alexis from our duckweed pumping video. We're out here at her pond. When we were doing the pumping, we noticed that a lot of trash was coming into the stormwater pipe, so this would be a great location for a trash catcher, and we're gonna show you how to build one of those in this video. The first step is to measure the distance the trash catcher is gonna to have to span. Okay. So we got a tape measure here. So if you'd like to take it down that way, we'll see how far it goes. So we're going to take that measurement back to our shop and we'll build our trash catcher there. So we'll see you then. Hey! Hey, John! Hey, Alexis. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. No problem. What do you got there? I brought all the water bottles you need. Oh, excellent. All right. Well, let's go get started. All right. Okay. So Alexis, a few days ago we were at your pond and we measured for a trash catcher. Do you remember the length? Uh, 24 feet. 24 feet. Okay, so these are the materials we're going to use. Okay. This is just a 4 inch plastic drain pipe. We're going to use some empty water bottles and then some net making supplies that you see here behind me. So the first step is going to be to cut this to length. Okay. Okay, so we've measured it out and 24 feet comes to right here. Okay. But we're going to need to add a little extra so that it has some room to, to bow out and flex a little bit in front of the pipe. So we've moved just to, you know, kind of eyeball three or four feet further out, and that's where we're going to make our cut. All right. All right, so the next step is to cut our rope. Um, we've just measured out about 20 feet. Uh, really, you just need enough lead that you have plenty to tie off on the edge of the bank. All right. Um, so we're going to use this. This is a hot knife. And the reason we use it is that it will melt the ends of the rope uh, and, and so they won't fray. Okay. Uh, you don't need this. If you don't have a tool like this, you can just cut it with a knife. But it's a good idea to flame your ends. Okay. Just, just melt them down a with little like bit. With like a lighter or something? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, this gets really hot really quickly. So we're just going to go right through like this. And this is just, uh, you know, plastic rope, uh, polypropylene rope. We get it from a net making supply website. And there we go. Great. So now we need to cut another one for the other end. Okay. All right, so now we have to cut holes in the end to attach our rope. Okay. So uh, you want to come in maybe, you know, four inches or so, mm -hmm. and then cut out a little hole and we'll bend the plastic back that we can get the rope through. All right. All right. Yeah, it cuts pretty easy. Yeah. All right. Got it. Through. Okay. So here's our rope, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna thread it through the hole. We've already made one on the other side. We're gonna tie a knot, but we're gonna leave our lead line pretty long. So, so there you go, just do an overhand knot with both pieces. There you go, you make a loop, push the ends through, and then pull the entire tail out. You look like you've done this before. <laughs> I practiced. That's pretty good. And then we pull it down. Uh, it's important to make sure that you leave enough tail here that it doesn't slip out. Now, the reason we've gone all the center is mm -hmm. that we'll, we'll get a nice even distribution of the weight when you pull against it, but we're also going to stuff this with our empty bottles okay. so that it will float, and this will hold it in place. All right. So the next step is to fill this up with the bottles. Okay. All right. Well, these are the bottles I collected. I'm hoping some of them aren't too big. Um, actually, no. This is perfect. Anything that will fit inside the tube is mm -hmm. fine, and if we put the bigger bottles on the ends, it'll help hold the smaller ones in the middle. Okay. All right. So let's get started. So we're using trash to collect trash. Exactly. Recycled materials. So we finished stuffing our tube with the models, and then we tied our second rope yep. on the other end. Um, we now have the whole tube stretched out and tied on either end just to keep it straight, and we've pre-cut our net. So it's time to attach the net to the tube. Okay. 
and we're going to do that using uh, cable ties or zip ties. Um, it's pretty easy. We're just going to wrap it around the tube uh, from one end. You just catch a loop and you go as tight as you can. Um, there's no real rule about you know how tight it has to be. We just don't want it to slide up and down on the tube. Okay. And then we're going to stick the zip tie through like that and then we cinch it down. It's All right. pretty easy. Does the, does the net need to be on any side of the tubing? Uh, well, that's actually a good question. The tube sort of has a natural curve to it because of the way it comes rolled up. Okay. So if you put the net underneath and hanging down toward the inside of the curve, I, I know that that's hard to explain, but you'll see when we put it together, it, it makes a little sense. Okay, so we finished attaching our net and now we have to add a bottom line. And the reason we need that is that we don't want the bottom of the net to just swing out in the current and it won't catch anything. Okay. So this will allow us to tie it off. Now we've pre-cut a piece of rope that is the full length of the catcher from the outside edge of the lead rope to the other outside edge of the lead rope. So okay. it's the full length. And we're gonna just sew it through the bottom. Right. Um, the important thing to remember here is just stay on one line and go straight because you don't want to kind of weave up and then you end up losing part of your net down there. Okay. Well, this is something I'm good at. It's pretty easy. So we attached our bottom rope and the last step is to use these lead weights okay. to hold it in place and to, to give it a little weight on the bottom. These are made for commercial fishing nets and they just clamp right on the bottom rope. So we're going to just stick it around the edge of the rope and make sure we catch a piece of the net and then clamp it down with the pliers. All right. How far apart should I do them? Uh, we want to go about every two feet is usually enough. There you go, it just needs to be tight enough so that it doesn't slip off. All right. Okay, so we're gonna work our way all the way down. Sounds good. So Alexis, we finished our catcher now. Let's see what we got. So you can see we have the boom up top to catch anything that floats. Yep. We have the net that'll hang down in the water to catch things going down a little bit lower. And the weights will, will keep that extended. Okay. And then we have the ropes that you're holding to tie it off to the shore so it won't get away. All right. And remember before we were talking about the curve of the tube? Yes. Well, now you can see that. And so we wanted to make sure that we had our net on the right side of that curve. If it was on the other side, it, it just gets a little twisted when we're trying to install it. All right. Okay. So right. now we just have to put it in your pond. So we're going to head out there tomorrow and we'll install it with you. All right. See you then. All right. See you then. We're back at Alexis's pond to install our trash catcher. Thanks for coming back out. Yeah, it was really easy to build yesterday. So how easy is it going to be to put it in? It's very easy. The first step is just to put in these stakes to tie it off to. All right, let's get started. All right, come on. This is the spot we measured from, right? Yep, right here. Okay, well, let's go ahead and put the stake in. Now you just want me to hammer it? Just hammer it in. How far do you want me to go? Um, just down to the pole is kind of stable. Well, let's see. Yeah, that's okay. It doesn't have a lot of force on it. Okay. All right, so now we need to tie it off. The top rope first? Uh, yeah, either one really, but we'll start with the top. Okay. And how do you want me to tie it? Uh, well, you go around the pole and then uh, leave enough rope uh, between the pole and the catcher that the, the catcher will float freely in the water. So in this case, it looks like about four feet. Okay. And then we're going to just tie it off to the post so that it slips up and down. That way, if the water level rises, the catcher can float up. All right. So uh, we're going to just use some half hitches, but you know, any knot you're comfortable with is fine. That seems really loose. Uh, yeah, that's fine because we want it to be able to slide freely. Uh, these signs here will stop it from floating off of the top. So that's why we have these here. Okay. And then the bottom one? Uh, yep, yeah, we're just going to tie that one below it. Um, leave a little bit more rope this time because this one's going to hang down in the water. So we don't want it to be just as short or you'll have it uh, pulled right all the way up to here. All right. So now we need to put it in the water. All right, I'll take these ropes. Okay, I'm going to go get that in. really easy. It's going to collect all the trash that comes out of this pipe? Uh, yeah, it's going to catch most of it. Uh, with a big pipe like this, sometimes the force of the water will blow trash over the top of it. So if that happens, you just want to loosen up the ropes a little bit okay. and move the catcher a little further away. All right, so just adjust it. That's right. And then, of course, when it catches the trash, make sure you come scoop it out with a net or a rake or whatever you can use. Okay, 
Well, this is really easy. Thanks for helping me out so much with my pond. Oh, no problem. And if you at home would like to see detailed instructions on how to build this, you can check out the Adopt-a-Pond Notebook on our website at the address on the screen.